All right, this evening, it's good to be back with you. And this evening, we want to talk to you about sharpening your gifts. We want to talk to you about sharpening your gifts. Every person on the face of this earth, especially uh, if you're in the body of Christ, you have a gifting that has been given to you by God. And we need to make sure that we sharpen our gifts in these times when we, it seems like we have leisure time, we really need to be preparing. Uh, we really need to be sharpening our gifts and we need to be getting ready for the next move of God because trouble don't last always. Storms don't come to stay. And so we must uh, have, have our mindset that we're in a position of preparation. So we want to talk to you about sharpening your gifts. We're still coming out of uh, Genesis chapter 40, chapter 41. Um, so when we talk about sharpening your gifts, we're talking about improving, improving your gifts, polishing your gifts, perfecting your gifts. We don't have time to waste time. And the Bible says over in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16, it says a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men great men so a man's gift that means the talent that a man has that God has given to us the skills that we have that God has given to us our abilities and our aptitude all of those things came from God and when we walk in those things when we walk in these giftings when we walk in our talent walk in our skills our abilities to do things our aptitude then God is going to bring us before great men. Now, let's just, I want to break this down. I want us to understand that God has put a gift, a talent, a skill, and special abilities in every person. That this present day world need and will make room for. So everything that God has put in you by way of gifts and talents and abilities, the world, this present day world, need what God has given to you. For them. Isn't that something? And so that's why, that's why I love about the body of Christ. It's so unique because in the body of Christ, there's many different people with different giftings and everybody has their own gifting that came from God that was assigned to them by God. And all of those giftings, uh, the giftings that each person has is, is a blessing for the next person. So if I have a gift, and I have gift and God has given me gifts to be a blessing to you. And then God has given you gifts to be a blessing to me. He has not given me all the gifts. He has not given you all the gifts. He's given me some that you can use and he's given you some that I can use. And he did that for a reason so that we can all be interdependent. That we see the body needs all the parts functioning all together so that we can be successful. And so that's what God has done to the body, done with the body of Christ. And he's done that for individuals, not just for the body of Christ, but for the world. There is a true saying. So God has put a gift of talent, special uh, skills, special abilities in every person that this present day world need and will make room for. There's a true saying. and You've heard this before. You were not created, or we were not created to make a living, but to live your making. I want to say that again. We were not created to make a living, to scratch out a living, to, be, to work hard. And so we, created, we were created to live our making. That means that the gifts and the talents and the abilities that God has put on the inside of us should be uh, our resources by way of us making a living. I want to make this statement. God created you and I with unique capabilities. OK, and those God given abilities are intended to bless the world around you. That means produce, bring, generate resources in your life that will benefit you by way of finances and so on and so forth. So so God has created a unique uh, uh, capabilities inside of us. As we bless the world around us, those blessings are going to turn into productivity and, and bring about and regenerate resources, resources, resources uh, in terms of finances, in terms of what we need to have a uh, decent way of life. Okay, 
And so what God has given you and, and, and what God has given you, he's given to you because that's just his blessing and his endowment upon you. You should learn to embrace that, enjoy that, and let it be a blessing to others. And also, it helps you to make a living, support you financially. It's, it's one thing to have a job to where you're making a lot of money, and, but you hate the job. It's another thing to have a job, and you love it because that's what you do. That's your niche. That's your craft. That's what you're good at. That's what you enjoy doing. And you might not be making a whole lot of money, but you're making a good living off of it. I want to submit to you that in that type of situation, you're probably going to live longer and have less stress in your life. So when you're young, I want to talk to the young people just a little bit because Joseph was a young man. While you were young, understand and try to, to, to find out what your gifts, talents, and abilities and skills are because that's what you love to do, all right? And when you love doing that, there's no strain. There's no, uh, there, there's no um, uh, high demand to where, you know, it frustrates you to where it starts bothering your health and, and a whole lot of things and you got all these frustrations and problems and stuff. But you're, when, you're, when you're working in your gift of man and you love what you're doing, it's easy for you, and then it's a blessing to other people. But this is, this is the main thing I want you to understand, that while you are, are, are waiting and, and, and uh, moving through your giftings and identifying them and, 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 and working on them and stuff, um, sharpen, sharpen with the gifting that God has given you. Sharpen them. Make them better. Polish them. See, the demand, there's another thing too, you got to understand that we're living in a world of competition. And so everything is competitive. There might be somebody else out there that has the same gifting that you have, but they're not polished like you. Okay? They hadn't spent time to sharpen themselves. They hadn't spent, time, spent, time, uh, spent the time uh, to, develop, uh, to, to develop themselves and perfect their skills. And so when you sit down, at the interview and they sit down at the interview because of you have taken time to polish and perfect your skills you were chosen over them and then you got the you know a lot of times there's favor involved in that too but my 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 thing is I'm trying to get you to understand that you got to be prepared and you've got to recognize your giftings and you've got to continue to polish your giftings and you want to live your life enjoying what you do and you have to find out you have to find now I want you to understand that it may take a while you might have to take a job over here that you don't like to get to a job that you do like and that's your giftings and that you enjoy doing okay because you got to feed your family you're going to have bills to pay but that's just that's just the beginning so everything that you learn prior to getting into what you really want to do, everything that you learn prior to that is going to be a benefactor and it's going to help you once you get to working in the areas of your gifting. I want to tell you by experience that every job that I've had previously was preparing me for what I do right now and today. Even way back to age 15, prepare, it's preparing me right now and it's helping me and, it's, and it's, it's, it's all connecting together to help me be uh, a better person and more skillful in my assignment for today's society. And so we have to understand that the gift that God put in you will provide an opportunity for you to go before great men. These gifts are also designed to help others. So you got to remember that your gift and your talents and your abilities and skills are not for you only. Okay? Not just for you to make money, just for you to prosper, just for you to be successful. God has given you your giftings for those giftings, first of all, to be a blessing to everybody else. Okay? A blessing to others. Let's go to the scripture here. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 41. We want to uh, quickly here go back to Joseph because Joseph is now uh, getting ready to go before Pharaoh, the king. The Bible says, and notice he's, what's going to get him there is not his good looks, not where he came from, but what's going to get him there is his giftings that God gave him. Okay? He had the ability to interpret dreams. He had the ability to dream and interpret dreams. And this special giftings 
uh, on the inside of him is going to help him uh, go to the next level. Now, I want you to remember, and I, I, and I hope you were paying attention to what I just said. There were other people that had the giftings to interpret dreams, but they, 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 they didn't have the, the superior. They didn't have what Joseph had. Okay? Pharaoh had some guys, but they couldn't, but they couldn't interpret. They were dream interpreters, but they couldn't interpret this dream. All right, so let's, let's just move through the scriptures. The Bible says right there, verse 1, chapter 41. This is the Amplified Version. It says, after two full years, Pharaoh's dreams dreamed that he stood by the river Nile. And behold, there came up out of the river Nile seven well-favored cows, sleek and handsome and fat, and they grazed in the red grass in the marshy pasture. All right? And behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the, the, Nile, uh, out of the river Nile, ill-favored and gaunt, and ugly, and stood by the fat cows on the bank of the river Nile. And the ill-favored gaunt and ugly cows ate up the seven well-favored and fat cows. Then Pharaoh awoke. But he slept and dreamed a second time, and beheld seven ears of grain came out on one stalk, plump and good. And behold, after then seven ears of grain sprouted thin and blight, by the east wind, and the seven thin ears of grain devoured the seven plump and full ears, and Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. So when the morning came, the Bible says his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians and all the wise men of Egypt. Check this out. These guys were talented and had abilities. Pharaoh sent for all the magicians and all the wise men of Egypt. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but check what the Bible says. Not one of them could interpret them to him. Not one. Then the chief butler, hallelujah, all of a sudden his mind comes, uh, his memory comes back. Says, then the chief butler said to Pharaoh, I remember my faults today. Delayed but not denied, deprived, rejected, and this own was Joseph, but all of a sudden, you see, you see, that's why he, you have to have the right attitude, because attitude determines altitude. Now, see, it's, let me tell you something. It, it's not people, when you do things for people and, 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 and you feel like they owe you and you want them to remember what you did for them, it's not, they're not going to be able to remember, but it's going to be God touching them to remind them on your behalf. So it's, it's so we want to say that that God touched the butler's mind and reminded him in this time, because Pharaoh needed somebody to interpret his dream, Joseph came up on the screen. Look at there. He said, and there was there with us a young man, talking about Joseph in prison, a Hebrew servant to the captain of the guard and the chief executioner. And we told him our dreams, and he interpreted them to us. Now, he's talking to Pharaoh. The butler's talking to Pharaoh. To each man according to the significance of his dream. And as he interpreted it to us, so it came to pass. The butler says, what Joseph told us has come to pass. He says, he says, this is what he says. He says, and as he interpreted to us, so it came to pass, I was restored to my office as chief butler, and the baker was hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. All right? They brought him hastily out of the dungeon. I want you to notice this, because we, we, we're talking about preparation. We're talking about sharpening and polishing your skills. Now, I want to go back and reiterate. First of all, I want to read uh, verse 14. It says, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. But Joseph, somebody said, but, but Joseph first shaved himself, changed his clothes, and made himself presentable. Then he came into Pharaoh's presence. I wonder why they put that in that in the Bible. Very important. Very, very important. This is a very important thing that, you, that we want to look at. Going back to Proverbs 18, 16, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. So let's look at what Joseph did before he went in the presence 
of King Pharaoh. Okay? The Bible says Joseph shaved first. Okay? He went back to his original identity. Got to remember now, Joseph was a handsome man. Joseph was handsome and good looking. All right? But you have to understand that being in prison, he probably looked like somebody throw, uh, uh, thrown away. You know, he's, he's, he's probably a lot of things change as far as his appearance. So he is preparing to go before the king, and so he has to deal with his appearance. All right? So he's going to shave. He's going to make himself presentable. Another thing he said, uh, so Joseph shaved first his original, uh, uh, his original identity. He had to get back into his original identity. He was handsome and good looking. And then, and then we're looking at the cosmetics, his physical makeup. All right? So he shaves. The next thing it says, he changed clothes. Now, let me tell you about the scripture. The Bible says he changed clothes, all right? But we also have to add in there and understand by context clue that he didn't just change clothes, but he took a bath too. I wish I had somebody. And so he cleaned himself up. He shaved, he took a bath, he cleaned himself up. What was he doing? He was preparing to go before the king. It's, it's, no, it's, it's just like in today's uh, society, uh, before we go on an interview, we make sure that we groom ourselves, we put on the, the proper attire, uh, depending on what job we are going uh, to interview for, and we, are, we get ready, we make ourselves ready, so when we get to the interview, that, that, that we can sit there and we can present ourselves uh, properly. And so he says that, so I'm saying he took a bath, he changed clothes, so he changed his wardrobe, he changed his attire, and then he made himself presentable, all right? That means he was neat, he was tidy, he was well-dressed. Why? Because Joseph's giftings were about to be on display before King Pharaoh. What do we say? While we have time, we need to be sharpening our giftings, okay? We need to be working and perfecting the gifting that God has given us. Why? Because this world, as you look around, they're going to need everything and all the abilities that God has given us. They're going to need it. And as we administer these giftings to them, as we are a blessing to them, there's going to be a boomerang effect. See, you can't bless somebody without being blessed yourself. Okay? Because why? Because of the law of sowing and reaping. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosoms. Be not deceived, God is not marked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. You can't outgive God. Give and see that. See, won't God open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room to receive? And so you have to be careful and you have to you have to discipline your mind not to be thinking about be aware of what's going on around you. But make sure while you have the time, work on your necessary, polish your giftings, polish your skill, sharpen your skill, perfect them, because I promise you. There is going to come a time, and I might be prophesying, and you can have the faith to believe this, or you can just set it on the shelf. But there's going to come a time, and I've experienced this in my life, there's going to come a time in the future that everything that you're preparing for and everything that you are, 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 are increasing in will be used to bless somebody, and it's going to turn around and bless you. How do you know? That God hadn't allowed everything that's going on, and I've said this before, for such a time as this. And so we have to understand that we can't have tunnel vision. Okay, we, we, can't, we can't be one-track minded. We can't just be uh, existing and stumbling around. We have to understand that we still have purpose in our life. My life is like it is, and I'm successful, thanks be to God, because of the things that I have experienced from day to day, month to month, year to year. There are some things that I started off doing in my life, and it seemed like it had nothing to do with the connection and where I was going. 
but all things work together for the good. There is nothing that you will experience in this life that God won't turn it and mix it and make it to be good and to, to help prosper you and to help you be successful in the future. Don't despise the days of small beginnings. There's a scripture that talks about though your, in, your beginning may be small, yet shall your latter end greatly increase. Just work, work, just, just, just work, work, be faithful, be diligent, get the lesson, learn the lesson, learn what God is trying to show you, learn what God is trying to teach you, learn the disciplines, go ahead and do the exercise. I know it hurts. I know the muscles are sore, your spiritual muscles are sore. I know sometimes you give out a breath, sometimes it feel like you're not going to make it, but gird up the lawns of your mind. Keep on the full army of God arm of God. Make sure you keep your attitude in check. Make sure you don't go down the road of complaining and, and, and excuses and a whole lot of other stuff that just cause you to spiral down. Make sure you stay on target. Make sure you spend your time wisely. After you study, after you pray, after you've done your chores. Now, you need to put yourself in a situation where God can speak to you and continue to give you directions and instructions as to how to be a better you. Because I need you to understand, and you need to tell yourself, like the Clark sisters, they have a song out. Uh, it's, well, it's actually, it's Dorinda Clark. She has a song out, and it says, I'm coming out with my hands up. God bless you. We'll see you next week.